Today we're going to look at psychology within golf and we'll do a little Q&A at the end. The first thing I want to just let you guys know about before we get started is um, I've got this new exciting project that I'm working on with Peter Arnott, who's also a golf coach at Swanson Golf Academy and Professor Ian Renshaw. So basically Peter and Ian are putting together a book on Tiger Woods' development. And what's happened is it's actually kind of morphed into a series of five books now, basically got like a gold mine of information right from when he was a kid, all the way through school, through high school, college, and obviously all the way onto the tour. So that's actually launching. Uh, the website's live. It's called trainlikeatiger.com. And it's actually, it's kind of morphed. It's going to be more than a book now. So it's going to be like a, really like a program, like an online program. So really excited to be involved in that but let's get on with today's presentation so what i wanted to start with was something called awareness okay so awareness is something that doesn't really get taught a lot on the golf course um, or in golf coaching just in in general so there are really three critical areas to performing well psychologically on the golf course so they're kind of all interlinked and what I want to do is kind of explore all three as we go in a little bit more depth. Physical awareness is the first one. So what is physical awareness? A simple way to think about it is the state or condition of your body at any given moment. Think about maybe when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you might feel a little bit stiff. You might feel heavy. You might feel light. Day to day, that's going to change. So a good example would be during your warm up before you go and play golf, say you're doing it, some, some stretches, some exercises, or even if you're hitting a few balls at the range, what I want you to try and develop is physical awareness. So when you are doing your warm up, ask yourself physically, how do you feel in your body? So do you feel, here's some examples, do you feel flexible or inflexible? Do you feel energetic? Or lethargic? Do you feel slow or do you feel fast? Do you feel relaxed or are you quite uh, tense? Also, if you may be carrying any injuries, are they starting to flare up? So it's really just checking in with your body. What you're feeling physically is going to change from the moment you wake up to warming up to standing on the first tee to finish on finishing on the 18th hole. So how do you apply this physical awareness when you're out there on the golf course well the first one's just checking in with yourself and physically asking yourself how do I feel then the other one is what I like to call BTT so these are three different kind of concepts you can use or tools you could use um, kind of in your mental toolbox to check in with your physical awareness so as you're at the practice range maybe hitting a few balls or you're playing the first hole start to pay attention to your balance, okay? On a scale of one to 10, how balanced do you feel today? You might feel unbalanced on the first hole, but by the time you get to the sixth hole, you start to feel a little bit more balanced. So just start to make little mental notes of this. Um, the next one would be tempo. Today, when you're, you know, when, you, when you're hitting shots or you're on the golf course, do you feel quick? Like, is your swing quick? Or does it feel nice and smooth? And then the final one, which is probably my favorite one, would be tension. So do you feel physically, are you holding any type of tension in your body? So a typical one to start with would be um, your hands and your grip pressure. How tightly are you holding the, the golf club? Other things you could think about tension would be kind of tension up, up by the head, um, tension anywhere in the body really it could even be from you could actually feel it inside as well so whereabouts can you identify even when you're sitting here right now can you identify areas of tension within your body and I think this is just overall a great skill to become aware of so you're, you're trying to develop physical awareness you kind of every every now and then you're just checking in to see how you feel now Picture almost two different scenarios here. Think back to a time when you've played your best golf. 
And then ask yourself, when I was playing that round, was I physically aware or was I not aware at all? Personally, like if I think back to my, some of my best rounds, physically, how am I feeling? I'm feeling very little tension in my hands and my shoulders. That's probably where I tend to carry my tension in the hands or the shoulders. And if I'm feeling tight in the hands or the shoulders physically, and I'm aware of that, it's likely going to increase my tempo, my speed on my swing, and my timing's not likely to be as good under like stress of competition. So when I think back to the best, best, you know, games of golf I've ever played, I've always been very relaxed. And I've also had like really kind of confident, relaxed body language where I'm just out there kind of having fun. So that's physical awareness. I hope that gives you a few points to, to work on. Moving on to the next type of awareness. So that would be mental awareness. The big thing here is that you are more than the thoughts that come into your head. Okay. Mental awareness is that constant mental chatter you get while you're practicing or while you're playing a, a tournament, all those, all those thoughts that come into your mind, that's what we're talking about here. So the first question would be, are you using the left side of your brain when you're out playing or are you using the right side of your brain when you're playing? The left side of your brain is what controls conscious thought. So it's very much from the neck up and research shows that's only about 10% of your brain power. So that's all the, the kind of thinking that goes on, problem solving, decision making, that kind of happens in that area. The right side of the brain, that's where subconscious thought comes from. Um, so that's all to do with creativity, imagination, and all these kind of what I would call sensory abilities. Research shows that's actually 90% of your brain power is the right hand side of your brain. So if you're only using the left side of your brain, there's a lot of untapped potential from that right side. So, you know, what does that look like? If you've ever experienced what people call being in the, the moment or the zone, it gets talked about a lot in golf, um, particularly Tiger Woods is a great example. When Tiger's in the zone, he is very, very difficult to, to catch. And he's it really is in a state of creativity um, and he's very much playing, I would say. It's kind of play, having fun, kind of expressing yourself. That comes from neck down. But when you're stuck in this left side of your brain, neck up, constant thoughts, not, not that helpful when you're out there on the golf course. So even going back to when you first started learning the game or learning a new skill, there's that play fun element. So I would encourage you when you are out playing is to start to develop the skill of first and foremost, just noticing that mental chatter that goes on that left side of the brain may be saying, we've all had these thoughts like, Oh, uh, that water looks dangerous on the left. I hope I don't go in there. So that's the first step is just becoming aware of those thoughts and then asking, are those thoughts actually helpful for this next shot? Likely, none of these thoughts are really going to help you. Some, some thoughts will help you, but you've got to be careful and only pay attention to the thoughts that are helpful. So the last section is going to be emotional awareness. When you're on the golf course and things aren't going well, it's actually easier to control or to try and control your kind of swing or your technique than it is your emotions so by that I mean when you're not having a good day and you get emotional and you get angry sad upset it's hard to control those emotions particularly when things aren't going your way what we end up typically doing and I've done this in the past is I've started to blame my technique when really it's not the technique that's letting me down it's my emotions. So it's the great question to ask yourself would be, how do you react emotionally to good shots versus bad shots? When you hit a good shot, what do you do? Do you celebrate to yourself? Do you give your friends a high five? 
And when you hit a bad shot, do you punish yourself? So we tend to over celebrate the good shots and really punish ourselves on the bad shots. Now, I'm all for celebrating the good shots, but what we need to do with the bad shots is we don't want to go from negative thoughts to positive thoughts. That's, I don't think that's realistic. You just want to get back to neutral. So if you hit a bad shot, it's not that we want to be positive thinking and have a positive mindset. I wouldn't say that's accurate because you, it's normal. It's a normal emotional reaction to get upset with a bad shot. What's not helpful towards performance is letting that emotion spiral out of control. So you, and let it affect the next shot on the next shot on the next shot. So it's really about getting from this negative reaction to just a, a neutral reaction where it's golf. We're always going to hit a bad shot every now and then. It It's just going to happen and you've just got to kind of accept that. So the big one is you can't control the outcome of the shot. No one can, never been done, but you can control your reaction to it. Okay. Another great exercise is to think about what I call why emotions. So if you think back to when you first started playing the game and kind of recall the emotions you associated with first learning to play golf, when I go and think about that, I, I, what emotion did I feel at the time? Excitement, because um, it was fun, uh, joy. So trying to get yourself in that emotional state, actually rewinding the clock, going back to the past and remembering why you play golf Emotions such as joy are often, for me personally, the rat, the root of why I play golf. I get extreme enjoyment from it. Um, so really, really powerful. I'll, I'll tell you a little story. Probably two years ago now, I was trying to qualify for the PGA Assistance Championship. So it was a Scottish qualifier. I want to say I was about four over par with about six holes or so to go. So I wasn't going to make the... I wasn't going to make the cut at this stage. And what I ended up doing was kind of going back to a round where I'd performed really well. So that particular round when I was about 16 years old. And what I actually did during that round was when I was 16, I was feeling like I was actually like Tiger Woods. I was walking and moving and feeling like Tiger Woods, like, shoulders back, head up, confident, because Tiger was really my idol growing up. So I kind of reconnected in my round with those feelings of joy. And I think physically it made my body language improve. And I really got back into the, the feel of, you know, that relaxed, those relaxed hands, shoulders back. And it actually somehow propelled me into this zone and they ended up making, I think, four birdies in the last five holes, and I ended up finishing second, so I qualified. So that's just a little story of when I've used the past and connected to those emotions, and it's actually really taken my performance to a, to a really higher level when I was actually struggling throughout the round. So that's just a little personal story. So one of the questions we had was, what to do when things aren't going your way on the golf course. So I've already shared a little story about, you know, what I do. I try and reconnect with the feelings and the emotions associated with the past and my best golf. Self-talk is another useful tool. It's best because that mental chatter is difficult to stop. But what you can do is control that chatter and and steer it in a more positive direction. So rather than focusing on what you want to avoid, i.e. hitting it in the water or hitting it in the trees or missing the next three foot putt, it's focusing on what you want to achieve. So rather than saying, I don't want to miss this putt, you say, I will hold this putt. So the two words I will are two that I personally use as well. Like I will hold this. I will get this up and down doesn't always work out right but it helps it really does another one I love to use is body language so that the best image for me is honestly Tiger Woods when he's you see him walking down the fairway he's head up shoulders back 
you can just tell his whole body is loose and relaxed and he's actually got a smile on his face as well. So some hopefully some useful tools you can use when things aren't going your way on the golf course. That kind of brings us on to a great quote from Ben Hogan. I'm, I'm sure you've all heard it before. So the most important shot in golf is the next one. Again, it's just a bit of a reality check that you are going to hit poor golf shots. You're, you're human. We all do. So we all hit bad shots and we all have bad holes. What we need to try and avoid is going on that downhill spiral of, oh, I hit a bad shot, punish ourselves, hit another bad shot, continue to punish, punish and punish. And it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you've got to accept the bad shots when they come and really just be okay with it, you know, become okay with hitting bad shots. So how to focus your mind on one shot at a time, okay? So let's say you've hit a bad shot, you're in the trees, you're a little bit, you know, you're disappointed you've ended up in the trees. A great question to ask yourself, to focus yourself on the next shot, which is your next task. Ask yourself, okay, I've hit my tee shot into the trees. What's a good score from here? Okay, so if it's a par four, and you would normally reach the par four in two shots, if you're in the trees, a great score is actually a five from there. Okay, so rather than trying to force a par, you end up being a little bit smarter. So if you go for the par, it's highly likely you'll get yourself into more trouble and make worse than bogey. You'll maybe make a bogey or a double. We've all done it. So ask yourself, what is a good score from here? I'm going to touch on the, the benefits of having a pre-shot routine. For me, the pre-shot routine, um, you've maybe heard about it. It's all about taking a practice swing before you hit a shot, the kind of moment leading up to hitting the golf ball. You've got 40 seconds is actually the time frame you've got to hit your shot. So what do you want to focus on during these 40 seconds so that you can, you can hit the best shot possible? So the first one is you want to select the shot you're going to hit. Okay. So there's a lot that goes into that. You've got to select how far is it? Where's the wind? What club should I use? And what shot shape do I want to use? Do I want to hit this left to right, right to left, or pretty straight, low, high? So there's a, you got to make a lot of decisions in a very short period of time. That'll, the more you play golf and the more you, you use this time effectively, you'll get quicker at that. That is a skill. The best players do that almost without thinking it's become that natural. Now, once you've selected the shot you're going to hit, the next thing I want you to do is choose, choose a sensory feel. Okay, so what is a sensory feel? Well, it could be something like making sure your, your hands stay nice and relaxed or have constant pressure through them throughout the whole swing so you don't tense or tighten up during your swing. Uh, another feel you could do would be feeling a nice tempo with your swing so choosing a speed so say you could pick a, a num you could say rather than going 100 percent speed go 80 percent speed or your sensory feel could actually be something that you're currently working on in your golf swing so i know both of you actually have this a similar issue with the club face being open at the top of the top of the back swing so having a feeling of that club face through the shot in a different spot would be a form of sensory feel. So select the shot, choose a sensory feel, okay? And that feel will change day to day. And the next step would be just be present to that sensory feel as you step into the shot. So the only thing that we really want to be in your mind is an image, use an imagery here, so a visual visualization of your ball flight you want to hit and connecting that to some kind of sensory feel. So there's a few books I'd recommend reading if you'd like to dive a little bit into more of this. So the first one would be Every Shot Counts um, and specifically chapter six. So that's on distance, accuracy and the secret of Tiger Woods. Um, the next one would be Be a Player 
be a player has a great chapter it's actually chapter one on awareness which we've talked about a lot today and the last one would be the lost art of putting chapter two is called attention and attention is very similar they've just used a different word um, very similar to what we've talked about today in terms of awareness so I hope that's been helpful um, if you've got any any questions um, we'll we'll take them now <laughs>